Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at how to use InDesign to create a small simple little flyer like this. Here's another example of another flyer using similar steps. It's got like a picture on one side, it's got a bit of text on the other side. We've tried to match the colors as well as we can and we started to put a few shapes uh, in, in there. So to create something like this we need to jump in and uh, create a new document inside of InDesign. So to create a new document, you will need to go to File New. Once you're here, you can go to your settings and you can now start to look at some of the presets if you're doing it for the web um, or print, etc. So now what we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating a document which is about half the size of an A4 page and we are going to make sure that we uh, change the orientation to landscape. So I'm just going to pick on this one, letter half, and I'm just going to make sure that I've changed the units to millimeters and that I've changed the orientation to landscape. Now before we click create, we're going to have a look at some of the options in here. We can change the preset if we really want to, but we don't have to do that. We're going to leave the margins alone, but we are going to change the bleed. And I'll explain this once we actually get into our, our document. So the bleed, we are going to just write three mils. Okay. And then it will change all of them. So once we've done that, we're going to leave the slug uh, at zero, but we are going to worry about changing the bleed. So then we will go to create now. If you didn't put the bleed in, then you wouldn't have this little bit of extra bit at the top, which we've set it to three mils. Now this is useful for printing so that you can push the image right to the edge. And then what happens when it actually gets printed, all of that gets uh, cut away. So you're left with a, uh, like a document that doesn't have any white borders around uh, your whole design. So once we've got that out of the way, we need to worry about our color schemes. Now I'm going for, you know, like a Hawaiian, you know, setting here. And I did take this picture on my last uh, trip to Hawaii. So in this color scheme, I'm going to be looking at, you know, the blues, the, you know, the colors of sand, things like that. So what you can do is there is a website called Adobe color. And basically when you go here, you can, um, you can have a look at different color schemes and you can see what colors kind of go together. So uh, I've just changed, you know, my color themes to most popular and you can go and pick one of these that suits your uh, design or you can actually go in here and you can drop your photo that you've taken and then Adobe color will extract the colors out of that photo for you. So what I've done here is I've saved my Hawaii beach theme. And then I've also downloaded it. All right. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going back into my InDesign document and I'm going to start to worry about putting the colors in here. So now when dealing with color, there's a few ways to actually do this. You can have a look at your CC libraries and you can start to import your themes that way. But if you go to window color and go to swatches, and now this is where you can really set up your swatches. So, Basically, InDesign gives you a, a certain set of colors and, you know, really they're not useful for, you know, every project. So you want to go in, you know, manually and you can change some of the color settings there. You can also change between RGB and CMYK. Now CMYK is used for print magazines and RGB is just used for web stuff. Now, when you do this, you can actually put in the hex value of the colors. So if you have colors from Photoshop that you know are cool, you can grab the hex value and you can put it in here. But now since we've gotten all of our you know, colors from Adobe color and we've extracted them from our image, we can actually go into here and we can load a swatch. So all you have to do is click load swatches and you can find, you can find where you, your download uh, went and then all you have to do is just import them. So now if you want to rename anything, you can just click on that. And so they're, they're my Hawaii colors and it's got the RGB values. And if you want to change that to CMYK, you can also go into there as well. But so now I've got a few colors that 
I know that will go well with that picture because I'm going to put that picture in my document. We're first going to start by creating a background. Okay, so to, and I'm just zooming out and I'm just holding Alt and uh, the scroll on my mouse and I can zoom out uh, nicely. So the first thing that I'll need to do is I'll need to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now, because we have the bleeds set up, you need to make sure that you go out all the way to the bleeds and not just for that, you know, this content in here. Now, you don't want to put any text up there or even close to there because that, that's the bit that's going to be cut off. So now once you have that, we can go back into our uh, colors and if you want to change the color to whatever you like, you can just by clicking on it. Once you pick a color that you like, we then can move on and start to add our background pictures in there. So the easiest way to insert a picture in InDesign is to go to File, Place or you can use the shortcut Control D. So once you find your picture, you can place it onto the document. Now, I've had the, the rectangle already selected, so it's gonna paste it directly into that. So we don't really want that. So we're gonna undo that by pressing Control Z and we're going to place the image over here on this side. And so now we're gonna have two separate uh, things that we can put the image on, etc. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put my image there and I'm just going to kind of fix it up so that it fits that whole area. Now, if I wanna make that image bigger, if I just try and do that, I'm expanding the frame around the picture and I don't really wanna do that. I wanna actually increase the size. So I'll need to hold shift and control and then I'll grab one of these points and I can make it bigger. So shift and control and now I can put it to wherever I need it and then I can just frame it up kind of crop the bits that I don't need and so there I've got my picture as the background now the quality isn't that great so what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna go to view display performance and go to high quality and now I've got a high quality version of that image okay so yeah it's looking pretty good so far so now we've got our picture up and ready to go. I, I want to kind of split it in half. So if you look here, I've got it kind of split with this side and then this side, which it's got the background in there. It's just a little bit, the opacity is lowered a little bit. So I'm going to do that here. I'm just going to click on the picture and I'm going to bring it over the middle until it snaps. And you can tell that it snaps because you can, there's a pink line that kind of appears. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this side of the image. I'm just going to move that rectangle back a little bit and I'm just going to change the arrangement of this and I'm going to put this picture as send to back. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this side a little bit. Uh, I'll change the opacity a touch just like that. So if I change it down to maybe 85%. All right. So now I can put some text and you know, you can kind of just faintly see it in the background. So anyways, now we're up to adding uh, some text. So to add text, it's pretty straightforward. Grab the text tool. Okay. You can write your text in there. So I'm just going to write my heading. It's pretty small for now, but I'm going to go in here and just uh, change the font size to something a bit bigger. And now I'm going to worry about fonts. Okay. In the Adobe Type Kit, there are a whole range of really, really nice fonts that you can have a look at. So you should really go and explore some of them. All right. So I'm just going to go and pick a certain font. And once I'm happy with the font, if I want to change the case, maybe make it all uppercase, I can. If I want to change the size, if I want to change the color of the writing, I can just go to fill and then I can go into my Hawaii colors and I can, you know, change the writing. So I've got that color there. So that's like a beachy kind of color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put the constraints of that frame to the size of that section from there to there. All right. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to center align it. So now once I've got that text is aligned to the center of that frame. So that's pretty cool. Another thing you can do with text is you can add a stroke if you really want to. Um, I can add black and white here or I can go into one of my colors. For example, if I wanted to put it as a blue stroke and just change the size 
a bit I can but for something a bit more noticeable I can change it to white or I can just change the color to black so just go back into stroke and then you can change it so it depends what you want I'm just gonna leave it white for now and I'm gonna focus on another way of putting some text in so I've just went and um, gone into Microsoft Word and I've just written a few sentences about Hawaii now I, I can save that and then I can actually place that into my InDesign document as well so to place that document into my InDesign document again it's control D to place and then you just find the file and then the text will all appear and then all you have to do is just drag a box and uh, there the text is all there so the same as my uh, from my Word document so I'm just going to move that text or that frame into the same kind of position that the heading is in. So I'm just going to maybe put it up like that. I'm going to center align it and I'm going to change the font. And I'm just going to play around with some of the font sizes, you know, maybe make it a little bit bigger and maybe change the colors. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to place another, so something like this, it's just a PNG that I downloaded and um, I'm going to put it inside of uh, this document. So what I need to do is I need to press Control D to place. I need to find my file and then when I'm ready, I can just click and just put it into my document. Now, if you want to make your frame like, for example, that big and you can always go to fitting and then you can go to fit uh, content to frame or fit frame to content. So I'm just going to fit content to frame and now I can put it inside of my picture over here so now i've got this little shape over there and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some text and i'm going to put that text inside so i'm going to just write something about hawaii so enjoy your next all right and then once you're ready to put that text back in you then make sure that the frame is big enough for the text and what we are going to do is we're just going to put it in here so i'm just going to move it around a bit so that i can kind of just squash it up a little bit so there you go i've got some text now what i can do with this is basically i, I want to group them together so i'm going to have a look at the align tools firstly so if i click on the text and then if i click on the uh the frame with the picture in there and once I highlighted both of them, I can see my align tools are here. So what I want to do is I want to grab both and I want to put them into the center. Now I also want to align the vertical centers as well. So now it's kind of put it in the middle for me. Now this isn't the most ideal, you know, setting for this text box, but I can get around with it as well. And I can move it around by pressing uh, on the keyboard. I'm just going to try and center that visually. And then when I'm when I'm good with that, I want to group both those layers together. So for, for example, now if I try to move the text, the text just moves on its own. But if I hold shift and hold both of them together, and if I go to group, now it would be considered one object and I can move that around just like that. So that's using the align tools and that's uh, using the group. Uh, settings so the next thing we need to do is we're going to put a border in here all right so the border will go around the whole page now to do the border what you need to do is you will need to create a rectangle around here and then we will need to change the fill and then only add the stroke so I'm going to grab a border or the rectangle tool and I'm just going to make sure that it hits the edge so now it all fills in so now what i what i want is i want to move the border down equally from all sides okay and there's an easy way to do this you can go over here into your transform panels i'm just going to make sure that the reference point is in the middle so it does kind of go from both sides and i'm going to constrain the proportions so i want to bring it at least i don't know maybe about 10 mils down so i can write minus 10 mils and now it will do it from both sides and it will bring this uh, rectangle in together from the middle you have to make sure that that reference point is set up so now i'm just going to change the fill to none and change the stroke i'm going to put it to white but i'm going to increase the size of that stroke so you can now start to see it all coming together there we have our border 
Now I just picked any random number for the border. But what you can do with the border is you can also, if I click on it again, you can change some of these settings. So you can do like dots, you can do dashed lines. I'm just going to keep that one thick and I'm going to put a small range of dots in the middle. So I'm going to go and grab the line tool and I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to hold shift to keep it straight. Now, even if you don't get it, um, you know, smack bang in the middle, it's okay because we can actually go and uh, try and fix it up a little bit later. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker so that I can now worry about the snapping. And so what I want it to do is I just want it to kind of snap in that center position. And I'm just going to change, change it to dots. Now I don't want it that big, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit like that. So now I've got the those dots in the middle. Okay, and if it's not really centered, you can you can move it yourself. Now we're getting into the final kind of stages here. A cool thing to to add right now I've got all the frames uh, everywhere. So if I press W on my keyboard, it gets rid of everything that is not needed. So, you know, the bleed is all trimmed out and uh, yeah, you won't see that. And it just makes it look a little bit less cluttered than this. So yeah, so you can just press W to get that out. The last couple of things that I've done is I've put some more text down there and I've just changed the color. So again, that's uh, very simple to do. Just grab the T tool. So www.visa hawaii.com again change the font pick a really nice font that you like you know it's a good idea to only have a maximum of like three fonts on your screen you know when working in one project don't pick uh, way too many fonts because otherwise it's uh, it's not gonna look that great so yeah so now I think we're pretty much done the last thing is all I did is I, I grabbed the line tool over here and I was able to draw a straight line underneath uh, the writing and I'll just uh, change the stroke of that to white and just uh, increase the size. Um, other cool things you can do with the, with the stroke is you can put rounded edges on the end. So right now you can see that it's uh, very, very sharp. But if I go back, click the select tool and then click on corner or actually, sorry, click on stroke and the cap, if I put a round cap, I can see that it rounds it off. And then once you're done, you can save it. Now you can save it directly in uh, InDesign. You can just go file, save as, but when you're ready to export it, you will need to go to file export. And what you want to actually do is when your, export, uh, when your export settings pop up, you can go into uh, marks and bleeds. And if you tick the marks, you know, the crop marks and the bleed marks, it will now show that on your document, which is now ready to print. So I'll give you an example of what that looks like. So when it comes out exported, you can see these lines over here, which now that they will indicate the, the bleed. And yeah, that's basically it. So just make sure you, you keep them going. The rest of the stuff like color bars will show how many colors are in there, but you don't really need to worry about too much of that. And yeah, anyways guys, I hope you've learned something now in InDesign and uh, I will see you next time.